Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm glad that each and every one is online with us in the victory night service. All right. And let's do this, y'all. As we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the Bible tells us the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and is circled unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof, says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And on that, brothers and sisters, let us lift up hands and, and praise and worship to our God. Heavenly Father, we yes, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for you are the creator of all things. And we thank you, Lord, because you are worthy of all honors and all praises for you are the great king. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause on victory night. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. We praise you, dear Lord God. Below me, there's a, a little link there <clears throat> where you can give. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And according to the book of Malachi, the Bible tells us that if we give, we pay our tithe, God said he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us and so much of it to the place where we would have to share it with someone else Amen. because we cannot contain all of the goodness of the blessings of the Lord. And that's coming out of the scriptures. So therefore, brothers and sisters, in an act of obedience to God, let us give in the offering and let us honor uh, the Lord in our tithing, right? And so on, so on that, we're going to go ahead and have prayer um, that God would bless both the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless this offering, the gift and the giver, according to their giving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, brothers and sisters, and want to give a shout out to everyone. Hey, this is the last Sunday night of the year, and I believe that the Lord is going to bless. And so um, I'm hoping that Brother Nick is online with us tonight and um, various ones, and I hope that Nita is online with us. And so our God is on the move. The Lord is still dealing with people's heart, right? Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, so God is good, and uh, I would consider this a special church worship service, right? And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. God is not into wasting your time, right? You have drawn near to God by coming back tonight by coming yes. back tonight, and you are at, at home coming back, right? Yes. You came back tonight, you are online, and the Lord does not count that lightly, right? And so God is in, is, is in turn drawing near unto us, and he has a message for us, right? Because he's not trying to waste any one time. Okay. And so that being said, blame all the mistakes on me, but to God be all of the glory, yes. right? for anything in this message yes. that would touch our hearts. So it's feeding time, right? Sunday morning is recruiting, but Sunday night is feeding. And yes, you can get fed in Sunday morning, but um, Sunday night is geared to feeding. And we're going to come out of the book of Hebrews chapter 12. I think Reverend Serrano wrote the book of Hebrews chapter 12. No? First, only the first two chapters. He helped Paul, I reckon. That's what they, some people attribute Hebrews to. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, we're just joking, verse 3 
We want to start in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. I hope Sister Alice Gay is on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 through 8. Y'all ready to roll? The word says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. He said, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chast uh, chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, meaning illegitimate children, and not sons. All right. And also, I want to come over to the book of John, chapter 15, verse 2. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 2. Where the Bible reads, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may, what y'all, bring more fruit. He purgeth it, purgeth it, that it may, what y'all, bring more fruit. And with the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, and I want to go into the year 2021 with this. We want to preach on the message entitled, Learning How to Recover. Learning How to Recover. Let us pray. I would like to ask Reverend Serrano, sir, if you don't mind, asking God's blessing on this church worship service, please. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this time to be here in your presence. Lord God, to hear your word. Yes. We ask, Lord God, that you touch each and every person person that is listening in Lord God who has logged in who has joined us we pray that the message will touch each and every one of our hearts that will will be moved Lord God to draw closer to you Lord we pray that you touch pastor lead him and guide him Lord, Lord God according to the message you've laid on his heart Lord God and that the result of this service be that your name will be exalted that you will be glorified we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I'm turning my Bible because I don't want to be fumbling around. I don't want to lose your attention. So we want to be all marked up and ready to rock, right? Amen. Learning how to recover. <clears throat> in band class, there was one thing that we were taught, taught when we were performing. And that is when you make a mistake, recover, and that recover quickly, okay? Because you can't get so stuck on the mistake to where uh, you begin to make a, make a big eye sore, more so a big hearing sore in the people's ears, right? Because if you recover quickly, right, if you recover quickly, they cannot tell. They cannot tell or see the mistakes that you had made, right? And we even do this as a band. When we come together and we play, Rev is on the bass, I'm on drums, Sister Davis is on piano. There's many a times where I've made mistakes, where he's made mistakes, she's made mistakes and everything. But the key thing, brothers and sisters, that makes a song sound good is when a person or when a group learns how to recover quickly. Right. Even in football games and in your sports, uh, there are mistakes that are constantly made, right? But the team learns how to recover. They cannot be stuck on the last play. They cannot be stuck on the last mistake, right? They have to recover quickly and get on with it. And learning to recover quickly, y'all, is a skill. The Lord does not want his people to be a people who recover slowly, right? The Lord does not want his people to 
run around uh, uh, with their spiritual ankle twisted and it's twisted for six months or or okay. their knee uh, kind of knocked out of place a little bit, right? Or their legs getting feeble, but yet they soak it up for a whole year of being feeble, right? But God wants you and me to learn how to recover quickly. And when we learn the skill on how to recover quickly, guess what, y'all? We become stronger in God. Yes. Uh, we uh, become uh, more and more disciplined in the Lord, right? Because all saints in the word of the Lord, starting uh, from the very first saint mentioned in the Bible, had to learn how to recover. Uh, going from Abel all the way over to Jesus, all the way over to Peter, all of the saints, the Ruth, Sarah, everyone, brothers and sisters, listen to me, y'all. Here's a game changer for some of us tonight. Had to learn how to recover, and they got so skilled with it, they got so good with it, that uh, they wind up in the book of the Hall of Faith. All right. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Why? Because recovering is a skill. Amen. Recovering is a skill. And we all are going to have to recover from something. There is not one person in leadership. There is not one church member. There is not one pastor. There is not one sister, brother, or of whoever uh, that will not have to recover from something. Right. Learn how to recover, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm on one tonight. All right. Yes, this is a skill that must be urgently developed for the quicker one can get up from the chastisement of the Lord with the proper attitude of making the proper adjustments. The faster the new muscles from the pressure can be used to bring forth the desired results in any child of God's life. For results, listen to this, y'all, because a lot of times people begin to lose patience are, are patience with themselves, right? Uh, and when they start walking with God and they get to know the Lord, they uh, uh, have just gotten saved. But the thing is, you have to be patient, especially uh, when you are new to this thing, right? And even as we've been walking with God for a, lot, uh, for a while, and we may say, man, I thought I had it by now. But the thing is, we have to be patient mm -hmm. because for results are not there to beat you up. You know, it took me years to learn this one, right? Results are not there to beat you up. Amen. If you let results beat you up, guess what? You and I will not get anywhere on a slow recovery. All right. And some people don't recover from results. Some people don't recover from results undesired, right? But, but, but results have to be properly used in all of our lives, right? For results are not there to beat you up. Results are there to get us to quickly, not lackadaisically, but quickly and fervently make the adjustments until we can enjoy the results desired in the Lord, right? Amen. When you learn to recover and you learn how to use uh, bad results versus good results, right? When you learn how to use that uh, uh, for your advantage, right? We need to use everything in life for our advantage, yes. for the advantage of our walk, for the betterment of our relationship with God. We got to use everything that comes to us uh, as an advantage for us to bring forth the desired results in our life. And God is all about that, right? Yeah. The word of the Lord tells us when we were without strength, right? What did Jesus do, y'all? Christ died for uh, the ungodly, right? The Lord helped us to recover, right? He helped us to recover from, from what, y'all? The fall of Adam, right? We responded to the dealings and the promptings and proddings of God until the day we got saved. Yes. The Lord has saved us, forgiven us of our sins, and then he baptized us in the power of the Holy Ghost 
Why? The Holy Ghost uh, definitely plays a major role in recovery after the blood of Jesus. I know this is, is a trip to some of y'all, but because I'm telling you that tonight uh, that there are times in God's orchestra, you're going to play the wrong note. Right. There are times in God's band, you're going to hit the wrong beat. But you, by the Holy Ghost, need to learn uh, with all of your heart and yes. all of your might. Make it a skill to recover yes. in God's band, y'all. I'm here to tell you that this thing works when we learn how to recover. All right. You don't learn how to recover, you'll die. That's right. You don't learn how to recover, you'll lose your soul right. and bust hell wide open. Right. Because you turned out of the way. You don't know how to lift up the hands that hang down. You cannot take the pruning of God, who is uh, uh, the husband man, right? right? He is the one that prunes and cuts us back sometimes. For what, y'all? Not for us to get mad about the fruits being uh, uh, cut off of the tree, if you would, uh, uh, but for us to have the proper attitude, knowing that it's going to bring forth more fruit. Yes. Brothers and sisters, you got to learn how to recover, right? We're in the fight for our souls, right? Yeah. Not only for the souls of ourselves, but for the souls of men and women. I'm telling you the truth. If I can confess, Rev, I wish I knew this years ago. Right. Going by results, man, results will beat you up sometimes. And if you don't know how to take it right, Man, it'll cause you to take a long time to recover just to wind up with the same results again because we fall prey as victims to those specific results. And so because we victimize ourselves spiritually, we put a ceiling, a ceiling on our spirituality. A ceiling. I just couldn't get over there. Because the person is unskillful in using results for their benefit. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to help somebody out there, right? We need to learn how to recover. We need to learn how to get up. We need to learn how to heal, right? You know, the whole God's whole creation is all about recovery. Look at the creation. Look at the animal kingdom. You break a lizard's tail, he grows another one back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all about recovery. You can't even kill all the ants. You can put all the ant kill you want, and I can put all the ant kill I want outside, right? But somewhere, somebody done found them a queen. <laughs> yeah. those, those soldiers got a queen, hemmed her up, and she gets pregnant, and she gives all these eggs out. <laughs> I'm having fun. Him up that queen, she still keep making them babies. And you go, where did all these ants come from? I tell you where they come from. Recovery. Mm. And they win every time. Yes, you ain't going to get rid of all the ants. They recover too quick. And the devil can't get rid of you and wash you out when you recover too quick. Amen. 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 We got to learn how to recover. And this is by no way to excuse sin in our life. Oh, no, I'm not excusing sin. That's right. Not at all. I'm not excusing that. There is no excuse for sin, right? But if I am chastised of the Lord, I'm going to get up quickly because of my Savior. And sometimes the Lord would chastise us. It is not necessarily because of some blatant breaking of his commandments. It's not because of some blatant breaking of his commandments. Matter of fact, it could be a weight that's on our life that we haven't gotten rid of. But here comes God and he gets rid of the weight for us. And it hurts. And one of our fruit have, has, we've been cut back. Or we're going through a moment of, of a working in of something that the Lord needs us to have in our life. Or we're going through a working out of something that the Lord needs out of our life. Right. But we need to learn to recover from it. Amen. Whatever God is working in our life and whatever God is working out of our life, we need to learn to recover from, from it. And that's why we need the Holy Ghost. Yes. The Bible tells us likewise the Spirit 
also helpeth our infirmities. Those things, infirmities causes people, it's talking about pain or our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Weaknesses, he helps us what? Recover from the infirmities, right? Yeah. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Ghost begins to, to pray through us because the Holy Spirit greatly aids in a quick recovery. Not a slow recovery, not a slow process recovery, but a quick re recovery. Through the Spirit, we are, we are aided in, again, uh, uh, lifting up the hands that hang down. Through the Spirit, we are aided in the strengthening of the feeble knees. Through the Spirit, we make straight paths for our feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. You know, we stay lame enough. We, we, when a person is lame, he can't walk in the ways of God. And he's turned out of the way, right? right. But he said, let us recover quickly. At least that happens, right? right? For you see, God has not made any throwaways tonight. The Lord has not saved you just to throw you into hell, right? But the Lord has saved you for what purpose? Yes, to go to heaven, right? That is good. That's great. Thank God for heaven. But in the here and now, he made you, he saved you to make you reflect his image in virtue and in character. Mm -hmm. And how many of us start off in the perfect image of God and salvation and at the baptism of the Holy Ghost? None. You have to learn. Jesus, right? Jesus said to us all, he said, what y'all? He said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, right? Something like that. Learn of me. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is, is light. Yes, you have to learn and how. You have to be skillful at recovering. Mm -hmm. Yes, our God uh, uh, aids us in quick recovery, not sluggish recovery, skillfully to recover. We got to learn to skillful, skillfully recover, right? Yes. And we talked about uh, muscles. Muscles are made, um, are stronger, or rather you get the results of the strength of the muscle after what, y'all? The recovery. You go to the gym, the first thing you're going to do is make your muscles weak. Why? Why? Because they because of, of the, the little uh, muscle fibers fibers begin to tear so they can do what y'all grow back. And it grows back, tear grows back, tear down grows back, tear down grows back, and it begins to layer and it begins to build up more and more. And you get more muscle and you get stronger and stronger as the muscle recovers. Amen. As the muscle. And then they give you a medicine, a mineral acids. They give you certain supplements to help you have a quick recovery and the Holy Ghost is the one that acts as a spiritual supplement to help your spirit, your faith, which has to be broken down every now and again. And you have to go through the challenges. It helps your faith to build more fibers and more strength because you know how to recover. That's right. You know how to recover. Can you recover tonight? Ask yourself to this, this tonight. Am I skillful at recovering? Ask yourself this. I want to ask you this. If not, are you willing to become skillful at it? Yeah. We over here listening to this cute little message and everything. But the, my thing is this, right? I want you to live it. Amen. I, I, want to, I want to sit here and blow hot air, right? You took all the time uh, to come to this church worship service, right? Just to let it just blow up in smoke, to receive knowledge, to be to er, to uh, as the Bible says, to ever be learning <laughs> and not able to come to the knowledge of the truth uh, that can change your life. Not ever learning, but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We can't be like that. 
We need to take the messages to heart tonight. We need to take this thing to heart and say, I am going to be a skillful recoverer. I'm going to be good at this thing, right? Because I want some results from God. I want to be able to pray. I want God to be able to hear me. I want him to be able to, uh, to heal people because I asked him to. There are results that I'm after in Jesus, right? And there are results that I am after in myself. But don't get beat up by the results. You know, sometimes when we look at our life, when we see little threads of stuff, we're trying to get somewhere, but it's only threads of this and threads of that. Let me tell you something. Thank God for the threads because something is there that was not there before. Amen. Some of you are serving God like Amen. you never have before, and you still get beat up by the results, right? But the thing is, if you don't like your walk with God, guess what? Let that be a schoolmaster. Let it be a teacher to, to push you or, or to uh, compel you to the desires that you're looking for in God, right? Amen. I don't feel the Holy Ghost enough. That does not mean that you never will. I don't have this. I don't have that type of relationship. Does not mean that you never will. That's right. I'm not as deep as you, Pastor. Hey, that, how about five years from now? All right. How about five years from now? Yeah. Muscles are made better. Muscles are stronger after the, after the recovery, right? Faith challenged. Walk challenged. Heart challenged. It's made better when it recovers, and, and here comes the results. You can't help but to get results in the Lord, right? There's a scripture. There's a scripture that I can only paraphrase at this moment, but it's in the book of Psalms. And it says, he that weepeth, he, he that, he that, he that, how does it go? Sister Davis, about those sheaves. He shall bring forth sheaves. He that goeth forth weeping shall doubtless come back. Shall doubtless come back. And, and she's going to look it up. She's going to look it up. But that psalm is so good tonight. And the descriptive word that's in that uh, psalm is the word doubtless. Without a shadow of a doubt, they will doubtless, uh, doubtless uh, res, uh, bring forth the desired results. Excuse me. It's Psalm 126. Six. Psalm 126, 6. Go ahead and read it, Sister Day. He that goeth forth and weepeth, mm -hmm. bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Ain't that something, y'all? I'm telling you, with his seed, he's he, he, he going to go out there with his seed. Guess what? He is going to reap the, the benefits, right? He may be weeping, yes. He may have to recover from some type of a pain or some type of a setback, right? But guess what? He will doubtless come back with reward. Brothers and sisters, sometimes things look really skimpy and things look thin. But hey, you know one thing I like? is my growth. That is my focus above results, right? Yes, we need results. Again, it is um, truly a litmus, right? It definitely is. It is a merciless mirror of who we are at that time. But getting beat up over it, you crazy. I may get a spanking, right? But I'm not going to get abused. I'm not going to let it beat me black and blue <laughs> to the point where I don't want to be with God anymore, right? I don't want to be under any uh, any uh, any uh, Holy Spirit pushing me and, and, and guiding me a certain direction because it seems like I'm getting beat black and blue. Why? Because I don't know how to recover. But let me tell you something. The Lord does not beat his children black and blue. He may spank them. Yes. He may correct them. That's, that's right. Yes. But when we learn how to recover, right, because God does it for our, our life. Not that he's in threats of throwing us in hell. Oh, no, he's not threatening us, right? Because God don't need to threaten anyone. God won't throw you in hell. He will. 
He doesn't need to threaten anyone, but this is one thing. He guides us as a father that loves his children, right? As a father that loves his children because his children need to learn, right? And understand his ways. And the best way to, to uh, endure the chastisement of the Lord is recover. You know, yes. Moses was on the mountain, right? He had to recover. Yes, his hands came down for a while because he was weary, but he recovered. And then he told, and when his hands began to droop down again, he had her on one side, and I believe it was Aaron on another side. They put a rock underneath him, right? And his hands were up until they won. Even Joshua, whenever Moses' hand went down, Joshua was down in the valley or uh, fighting against, I believe it was the Amalekites. He was fighting against them. But the thing is, is that, now I may have, a, a, as either Amalekites or Amorites, he was fighting against their enemy, we know. But the thing is, is this, y'all. He had to recover whenever Moses' hands went down. When Moses lifted his hands back up, Joshua could not worry about those who had died. Not that he did not care, but Joshua said, hey, let's get the victory. Yes. We're out here, right? Let's get the victory. Let's recover. Yes. And they what, y'all? They won. They won because they knew how to recover, right? And guess what? Moses didn't run around after that was done. Man, you know what? I'm done with this mess, man. My hands hurt. I'm not going through that again. No, he recovered from it. He recovered from holding his hands up all day long, right? Until they had the victory, he recovered from it. He, he no doubt probably had to get soaked, probably had to get rubbed down. They probably had to go find some being gay somewhere, rub the man somewhere, rub him down. And he recovered, and now he, he, here he is with the Ten Commandments and the Levitical priesthood uh, uh, doctrine and everything. Moses received the commandments of God, a man who knew how to recover. And he recovered more than one time, y'all. He recovered more than yes. one time. Joshua yes. recovered, right? Yes. David recovered, yes. right? Samson, y'all, yes. recovered, right? Men and women. What about what about uh, Samuel's wife? Uh, not Samuel's wife, but Samuel's mom, Hannah. She had to recover, right? She was skillful at it. She became rather skillful at it. Yes. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, her husband, I believe it was Elkanah's uh, wife, kept uh, deriding her, laughing at her. They begin to pick on this poor lady, right? They begin to deride Hannah. Even the priest thought she was drunk. But in her, in her a moment of pressure, she still recovered from the ridicule and from the, from the insults of, 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 her, uh, of her husband's wife and everything. She recovered and she whispered uh, Samuel into existence. She whispered that little guy. She began to tell God, I want a baby, I want a baby, I want a baby. God, I'll do this if you give me this baby. I'll do that if you give me this baby. And guess what? Here comes Samuel, the man who started the first Bible seminary, y'all. And Samuel had to recover, too. <laughs> the pressure Samuel went through, he had to recover from it. The people rejected Samuel from being a, a judge over them. He was the last judge. They, they rejected they rejected Samuel, and Samuel began to take it personally, right? He didn't like it. God had to tell Samuel, look, they're not rejecting you. They are rejecting me, but Samuel was taking it personal. He began to jack them up. I haven't stole from you. I haven't done this to you. And how, and how in the world y'all figuring I'm doing this in my own, <laughs> in my own rendition? How in the world y'all, how y'all getting rid of me? But he had to recover from that. From that downtime, yes, we may count it lightly. We may like, come on, Sam, you man. Come on, Sam. But it meant the world to him. And I'm going to tell you something. Somebody else's pain may not mean much to us. That's outside of them. But when you're in their shoes, 
it it it'll mean a whole lot then. And that meant that was painful for Samuel. And he could not get a bad attitude over it, right? Yes, yes. But it worked something out of Samuel's life. And virtue got worked into his life. When what, y'all? When he recovered. And it's just on and on through the Bible. You can't find anyone in the Bible who did not have to recover, right? Yeah. Name somebody who didn't have to recover. All right. Jesus, too. I mean, who, who can? And if the Savior had to learn skillfully how to do this, y'all, who took the chastisement of our peace, the Bible said, it was placed upon him. He recovered on that third day, didn't he? All right. He recovered on it. And really, before the third day, he recovered while he was hanging on the cross. Mm. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, right? I commit my spirit unto you as unto what, y'all? A faithful creator, right? Amen. Right? Jesus knew how to recover, y'all. And it's a skill that has to be exercised, y'all. Yes. You got to exercise recovery. Jesus like a muscle yes, I'm Lord. trying to help somebody right we wouldn't have amazon.com if Jeff Bezos did not have know how to recover right Amen. that's your boy your girl Oprah Winfrey we wouldn't have Oprah Winfrey if your girl didn't know how to recover that's right that's right right your girl your home girl <laughs> yeah your home girl and so on and so forth I'm just bringing it out Michael Jordan he was out there playing basketball sick and won the NBA right mm -hmm. and won it he endured it, right. and he recovered from the infirmity. He did not let it hinder him, y'all. How about you? Going into 2021, will you learn how to recover? As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed in reverence to God Almighty. You can pray after me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for all the things that you have done. Lord Jesus, let us continuously walk with you and let this mental capital that you have placed in the hearts of the saints be a helping aid in guiding our relationship with you. For Lord Jesus, we know that you are a keeper of souls and the very work that you have started in us you will complete it in that day. And we thank you, Jesus, and we are forever grateful for your mercy and your strengthening, your strengthening power. And we thank you for the food that you have served our hearts tonight. And let it energize us, Jesus, and let us take everything that you do to us and for us Take it the right way. We ask all this in the mighty and wonderful, powerful name of Jesus the Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I can't do that. I can't do that now, but we will. We'll be jamming. We're going to get our jam on soon, y'all. Hey, y'all. May God bless you real good. I'm going to get with you, Sister Constance. I got to get with you, find out what's going on. And um, let's see, any other announcements? Remember, Tuesday night Bible study is on like a pile of neck bones, as Reverend Woods would say. And um, hey, it's all good in the hood. May the Lord God bless you real good.